We are so very excited for our, our awardees, um, and we are looking forward to our program this evening. So can you join me in welcoming our first award presentation by Colin Donahue. Good afternoon, I'm Colin Donahue. I'm the Director of Student Media and Instructor in the School of Communications. I'm here today to present the Student Communications Media Award, which is given to the student who has done the most to advance communications on campus during the academic year. And this year, the award goes to senior journalism major, Maya Eaglin. Maya, come on. Well, we are on the Maya Eaglin Awards Tour, everyone. Maya, another week, another honor. Exactly one week ago at almost exactly this same time, uh, Maya was named the Outstanding Senior in Journalism at the School of Communications Awards Ceremony. Uh, it comes as no surprise, of course, that Maya has been uh, recognized so widely in the last week for her impressive work as a student journalist and a leader. She's excelled in every facet of her academic and professional life. Her GPA, nearly perfect. Her journalism, thorough, just, and deep. Her mentorship, strong and patient. Maya has shared her gifts widely and generously for four years, so her legacy here will continue long after she graduates. Kelly Furness, who's a faculty advisor to ENN, had this to say about Maya. Her accomplishments at such a young age, frankly, are intimidating. They are intimidating at least until you meet her because Maya is so incredibly kind, generous, and humble about her own abilities. She instantly elevates the conversation whenever she enters the room, not just because of her level-headed demeanor, but also because of her thoughtfulness and maturity that are well beyond her years. Uh, for the last five years, I and some of my colleagues in the school um, have attended the National High School Journalism Convention in search of passionate creative students who would be good fits at Elon. And last November, Maya joined us to help in our recruiting efforts. And she so easily approached these high school students, talking to them about her experiences, about Elon, about how they envisioned their professional futures. And in those moments when she was holding court with an individual student or a gaggle of them, I was struck by the power of her presence and her predilection for mentorship. Quite simply, it's in her nature to share her gifts, her story, and her knowledge. A student she worked with had this to say, I want to be Maya when I grow up. She is a great example of a leader, a hard worker, and someone who genuinely cares about others. When she asks how you're doing, she cares about you and your well-being. Getting to know Maya over the course of this year has been a privilege. Maya, it's also been my privilege to know you over these four years. Thank you for serving your community honestly and fairly, and congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Good afternoon. I have the privilege of presenting the Leadership Studies Minor Awards today, and our two winners for this award are Betsy Albrighton and Trey McMichael. In addition to graduating as a psychology major, Betsy is also completing a minor in leadership studies and another in statistics. More than just earning A's, Betsy truly set the standard for academic excellence. She demonstrated a deep understanding of theories and the interconnections among them, far beyond what is typically seen at the undergraduate level. Betsy's greatest accomplishment as a leadership student was her research project titled, Creating an Assessment Center for Entry-Level Professionals. Her project involved the creation of an in-depth, structured, multi-component assessment system designed to measure soon-to-be graduates' professional and leadership competencies. Betsy was motivated to focus on this after reading that most employers feel their new entry-level employees lack many of the leadership and professional skills they require. Her work will be a great benefit to students looking for insights into their readiness to meet employers' expectations and will be rolled out as an offering at Elon next year. Betsy's research was presented at SURF, the Experiential Learning Leadership Institute, last summer and will be presented there again this June. Her mentor, Dr. Chris Leopold, who shares his apologies for not being able to be here, shared, Betsy is not, one, not only one of the smartest and best leadership students I have ever had, but she is also perhaps the most hardworking. She has been a tremendous asset to me in helping us legitimize the academic rigor behind leadership studies and a phenomenal example of what academic excellence is when it comes to studying leadership. Talented as she is at deciphering theories and generating new perspectives, she is also extremely adept at identifying and implementing practical solutions. Successfully balancing academic and applied research is very rare, which is only one more testament to how much potential she has. 
This August, Betsy will begin her doctoral work in organizational studies at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. In the not so distant future, we will very likely be reading Betsy's leadership theories in our psychology of leadership class. Congratulations, Betsy. Trey McMichael is a double major in music theater and arts administration with minors in leadership studies, African and African American studies, and business administration. He's an Isabella Cannon Leadership Fellow, Elon Engagement Scholar, has served as an RA and an apartment manager, and held leadership positions in both the National Panhellenic Council and Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. He is a leader in the classroom, in his various leadership positions around campus, and as he lives every day. Over the summer, Trey competed in the National Hall Johnson Spiritual Vocal Com Competition in Las Vegas. Building on a lesson from one of his leadership courses, with what you have and who you are, do what you can do now, Trey researched and selected pieces composed by African Americans, intentionally serving as a gatekeeper for a tradition he believes in, and celebrating his ability to keep their music alive. His incredible talent and hard work was rewarded when he won first place in that competition. And then this fall, having experienced multiple situations involving bias and non-inclusive language, Trey decided to focus his leadership on creating positive change within the musical theater community. Working collaboratively with his faculty members, the Creed, and the Center for Leadership, Trey designed and led two powerful workshops that highlighted student narratives and created dialogue around the topics of leadership, inclusion, and diversity. Students and faculty worked together to understand shared values and identified ways they could reject bias. The feedback was so positive, Trey was then asked to do a similar series for the acting department has recently engaged with student athletes in the leadership, Phoenix Leadership Academy and is working to infuse the series of programs into offerings with the Creed and the Center for Leadership. While here at Elon, Trey found many ways to connect his dedication to the arts with his leadership passion for equity and justice. And as of yesterday, we know he will continue that work as an Alan Lee Hughes Community Engagement Fellow, spending the next year serving as a teaching artist and connecting main stage productions to common core standards for schools. We are so proud of you. Congratulations. The Endowed Scholarship, the Hilaire Pickett Leadership Grant, is awarded to students that have participated in the leadership or in leadership education and development here at Elon. Awards are granted to support students in their junior or senior years to pursue leadership internships or legacy efforts. The students must demonstrate a significant commitment to their organization and academics and be active in contributions that have had a positive impact on the Elon University community. This year's award recipient will go to support the Men's Leadership for Gender Equity Program proposed by Timothy Bowles. is currently a junior Isabella Cannon Leadership Fellow majoring in Human Service Studies with minors in Leadership Studies and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. Through his involvement in the Gender and LGBTQIA Center, the Center for Leadership, and a member of the Isabella Cannon Leadership Fellows Program, he has actively engaged and participated in a variety of leadership education opportunities to further develop his contributions to social change, to Elon's community, and beyond. The Men's Leadership for Gender Equity a program is a comprehensive education program that aims to provide a cohort of men on Elon's campus with the opportunity to explore, think critically, discuss, and learn about various interdisciplinary topics that they may not otherwise be exposed to. 
This program will be open to any male student uh, as well as anyone who is gender non-conforming or non-binary who wants to explore issues of masculinity and privilege. Please join me in congratulating Timothy Bowles and wishing him success in his endeavors with the Men's Leadership for Gender Equity program at Elon University. Hello, I'm Rob Perdue. I'm the co-director of the Program for Ethnographic Research and Community Studies, and I'm here to pr uh, present the Perks Ethnography Award. This award recognizes the student who has conducted the most outstanding ethnographic research project at Elon University, judged according to the quality of the process and the product. This year, the award goes to Sterling Rohr. Sterling is majoring in anthropology and religious studies with minors in Asian studies and Middle East studies. Uh, she's a multi-faith scholar, Elon College Fellow, and Periclean Scholar. She received the Lane Family Scholarship in Anthropology in 2018. Her project is entitled Devotional Music and Multi-Faith Encounter in a North Carolina Sikh Community. This project investigates the role of Sikh sacred music and religious experience, Sikh American identity, and the ways interfaith concerns impact everyday life. This research advances a larger goal of promoting a more nuanced, welcoming, and positive view of Sikhs in America today. Uh, her advisor, Dr. Amy Alaco, has this to say. Sterling has done outstanding ethnographic research at the Sikh Gurudwara in Durham over the, the last two years. She has recorded 70 interviews and engaged in hundreds of hours of participant observation over the course of this two-year project and has undoubtedly advanced the project of mutual understanding between members of the Sikh community and the Elon campus community. Rarely have I mentored a student as committed to truly getting to know her research community on their own terms and to reciprocity and mutuality in the research process. She has produced a sensitive and multidimensional ethnography that is deeply grounded in the literature, rich with narratives and self-representations of her participants and attuned to their own emphases and articulations. Congratulations, Sterling. There's one more for you. I get the double bump, okay. I'm also here to present the Catherine DuPont Weymouth Scholarship. Uh, and this, is an, uh, this honor is given in honor of alumnus Frank Lyon, class of 71. The scholarship is awarded to an outstanding student majoring in the social sciences whose scholarly work meaningfully engages the social, qu social science question and or methodology. This year's recipient is Sydney DeCaro. <laughs> Dr. Erica Lapina, faculty mentor for Sydney is away at a conference, but offers this brief commendation in recognition of Sydney. When I first met Sydney DeCaro in the fall of her sophomore year, she was an eager and inquisitive student in my research methods class. Sydney excelled at grasping the concepts and applications of social science research. Sydney was truly exceptional in that she continued to engage with research outside of the class. In fact, her research project in that class was the inspiration for her current scholarly work which examines the moderating effect of academic engagement on the relationship between perfectionism and burnout among college students. Through her preliminary research, she has identified an important gap in the literature and will be collecting pilot data this semester. Sydney seeks to expand and refine her work through her senior year with the goals of presenting and publishing her findings. Her research will strengthen her skills in survey methodology and analysis, especially in the areas of measurement, triangulation, and regression-based moderation and analysis. Wow. <clears throat> Sydney's work will contribute to the scholarly understanding of the construct of perfectionism by clarifying the positive as well as the negative outcomes of perfectionism in an academic context. In addition, the evaluation of academic engagement as a potential buffer for the deleterious effects of, of perfectionism that has the potential to impact college and university programming aimed to improve student well-being. Sydney is among the best and brightest students here at Elon. Her drive and intellect are wonderfully complemented by a sincere and endless generosity of spirit. Sydney DeCaro is a joy to work with and will make a lasting mark here at Elon and beyond. Congratulations, Sydney.
Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Kirsten Ringelberg, and I'm a professor in the Art History Program, and it's my honor today to do, introduce uh, four students and two awards. We'll start with the Helen B. Rippey Art History Award, which this year goes to Phoebe Mock and Reagan Kirkpracht. And I think just to make it way more fun for you, you should hold your awards open so everyone can see how beautiful they are. That's for Phoebe. That's for Reagan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, this goes. And notice that the art history crew is over there with the cameras. Uh, we, uh, in art history, we look particularly closely at the work of, uh, at the quality of work in our classes for this award, the Helen B. Rippey Art History Award. And Phoebe Mock and Reagan Kirkpatrick are proof that there are wildly different pathways to greatness in art history. The linear and precise is as generative as stopping to smell the conceptual roses. Identifying and organizing as helpful as questioning and deconstructing. Reagan whips our materials into shape, and Phoebe shows us what's missing from them. Together, they would fight crime if we were at criminology. But we're art history. Thank you, Phoebe and Reagan, for making it the best place to be. Congratulations. <laughs> The next award I'll present is the Edwina Graf Hughes Johnston Award in Art History, which this year goes to Alyssa Caffrey and Devin Rosenberger. Congratulations, Alyssa. Yes. <laughs> but I'm not done with you yet. If you're having deja vu, it's because both Alyssa and Devin were awarded the Rippey Award last year. And this year, they have appropriately shifted their campaigns to the Edwina Graf Hughes Johnston Award in Art History, which goes to rising seniors, who have shown both excellence in academic work and an especially clear commitment to our program in some way. Devin, a double major in French and Art History, is halfway through her Elon College Fellows research on the visual agency of working class women in late 19th century French paintings. She's in Paris, though, so enough about her. <laughs> Alyssa is an Honors Fellow with double majors in Finance and Art History, a more common combination than you might think. When she's not working on the research she just presented at SURF on the problematics of Nazi looting in the Crest Collection at the North Carolina Museum of Art, among other things, Alyssa holds our program together as our pace worker with a plethora of life-saving skills, including being a first responder when Dr. Gaddy can't find her keys or when I've been crushed by a pile of interlibrary loans. Thank you, Alyssa, for all that you do for us. Good afternoon. My name is Jan Fuller, and I have the honor of presenting three awards this afternoon. Each year, the William Monroe Senior Award is presented to two students who exhibit qualities that Mr. Monroe valued and that were, ex uh, and that were exemplified by his mentors, Dr. John G. Truitt, a local pastor, and W.A. Harper, who was in his sixth year as Elon's president when Mr. Monroe came here as a student in 1917. These values include a friendly attitude, good citizenship, personal growth, and the desire to help others. This award was started in 1950, 32 years after Mr. Monroe left Elon, and this is the 65th pair of students recognized for these qualities. I have no doubt that Mr. Monroe would be most pleased with our two recipients today. Our first recipient has distinguished themselves as an advocate and leader of multi-faith work across campus. An honors fellow and multi-faith scholar, she has focused her scholarly work around the intersections of multi-faith and social justice movements, presenting her work in multiple venues, including the Parliament of World Religions and the Southeastern Commission for the Study of Religion. 
In 2017, she completed a Certificate of Advanced Studies in Interreligious Studies at the Ecumenical Institute of Geneva, which involves six weeks of living in community with people of other faiths from around the world. At the 2018 Ripple Inter Interfaith Conference, she co-led a workshop on encountering truths in different religions. Her commitment to growing personally is illustrated by her work to educate our community, often through difficult conversations, about how best to support those in marginalized communities. She has also responded to the call to be a global citizen by studying abroad in Ghana and her work as a Periclean scholar. This recipient is a person of deep faith who appreciates the truth and value of other traditions and is committed to action that improves understanding across differences. Please join me in recognizing Christina Meyer as the 2019 I'm going to finish that sentence as the 2019 recipient of the Monroe Award. Good job. This is yours. You speak about me so eloquently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Our second recipient has demonstrated a deep commitment to service since arriving on campus. Early on, as an active member of the service learning community, he came to the attention of campus leaders and was selected to be a student leader planning service opportunities for our incoming first-year students. Since that time, he has accepted two other important roles in the Kernodal Center. First, as a student office manager, helping to ensure that everything in the office operates efficiently and welcoming guests. Second, he became the director of the Youth, Advise, youth Development Advising three, year, three After School programs. In that role, he meets individually with program coordinators, leads monthly meetings to read and discuss articles related to their shared work, and helps to plan events. This recipient is also a member of the President's Student Leadership Advisory Council and is active with the Student Union Board, planning weekly campus events. He does all of this while maintaining an impressive GPA and conducting research as a Lumen Scholar. As a recommender writes, he is mature, responsible, and ethical. He has a strong work ethic and uses his leadership to help others. Please help me to recognize Colin Deutsch as a 2019 recipient of the Monroe Award. The Truett Center Re uh, Reconciliation Award is presented to a student who best exemplifies the vision of Douglas G. Noyles and Edna Truett Noyles, class of 1944, benefactors of the Truett Center, which enables students to learn about their own and other faiths and to live lives of reconciliation. In a way that honors the essence of the Truett Center Recognition uh, Reconciliation Award, two recipients were chosen this year. One of our recipients has served as a multi-faith intern for three years, bringing a spirit of joy to the work of building relationships across lines of religious difference. The other recipient has used her skills as a filmmaker and documentarian to bring the story of the Truett Center mission to life. The interfaith friendship forged between these two has taken them all over from presenting at the Parliament of World Religions in Canada, to exploring interfaith and social justice in New York City, to leading Elon's regional interfaith conference, to the smaller, more intimate, but just as powerful moments shared on Friday Shabbat dinners and Sunday worship services. Through their sustained relationship together, they have proven that interfaith relationships are not only possible, but necessary in order to create a more beautiful and reconciling campus and world. Both of these two young adults have contributed to making Elon's campus a more joyful and hopeful environment for people of all walks of life. The Truett Center awards the Truett Center Reconciliation Award to both Hannah Podhorzer and Molly Herman Gallo.
And finally, the Ella Brunk Smith Award is presented to a student in the senior class who has made significant contributions to the religious and moral life on campus. In her thoughtful, steadfast way, this student has played a pivotal role in preparing for and leading services for the Elon community's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur observances. <coughs> These holidays are the most sacred of the Jewish calendar, and they require an intense level of attention to every detail. This student worked side by side for four years with our rabbis, covering the essential details with skill and grace, thanks to her thoughtfulness, care, and competence. The senior we honor today has also served as a trusted advisor to both students and faculty and staff, as a member of the Hillel Student Nominating Board, as a member of the Search Committee for an Associate Chaplain for Jewish Life, and Hillel Rabbi. Her meaningful, insightful questions elevated each process in, by inviting the participants to dig deeper, to be more thoughtful. She has helped to better all Jewish life programming, relationships, and programs in which she has participated, and I cannot think of any that she has missed. She has also been a leader in multi-faith programming. Her confidence and joy are contagious and are matched by high standards and scholarship. We recognize today a scholar, student, and leader of four years who brings calm and wisdom to all that she does at Elon and beyond our campus, and who surely has made significant contributions to religious and spiritual life at Elon. Please help me congratulate Mira Waxman as the recipient. <laughs> Hello, I'm Leanne Royster. I have the honor of presenting the Martha Smith Award for Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies. This award is given in honor of Martha Smith, one of the founding mothers of the Women and Gender Studies program at Elon University, to recognize the achievements, both academic and activist in nature, of a graduating senior who is a Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies minor. This year's award goes to Katherine Mars. And so, Katie, if you want to stand and then not come up here, I can come to you. Okay. And this is what I know of Katie pushing through and being right there in all the circumstances. I was surprised to see you today on crutches, so. Doing it looking great. Awesome. I first met Katie in our Refusing to Wait course. This was a course that was developed in response to the 2016 election, bringing into question such topics as the democratic process, small d, violence, organizing, advocacy, and more. We constructed the Just in Time course to be open to a variety of students, but admittedly, we were worried that Republican students might feel unwelcome. Katie was in my reflection group. The first words out of her mouth were, I'm proud of my conservative background, family, and values. She went on to share a number of sentiments that I imagine might have felt surprising to the group. Reflections on feminism, reproductive rights, faith traditions. I'll admit that I even left feeling challenged in my own bias. Thank you. Since that day, my interactions with Katie have been full of energy and excitement surrounding her deep engagement of issues central to women, gender, and sexuality studies. I was fortunate enough to have her in our PSJ capstone course last semester as well. I was then prepared for her fervor, but also marvel marveled at the way she was able to engage other students in the class, challenging them to grow in their analysis. She knew that their assumptions about her stance rendered her in a position of privilege when it came to being a catalyst for growth and development, and she used that approach skillfully. Another colleague said of Katie, I've never known a student able to balance deeply held values with openness for growth quite the way she does. Still another colleague said, she's the most rockin' of rock star advocates we have seen in a long time. Katie's final project in our capstone class was a sustainability plan for the expansion of women's services for a local nonprofit. She was focused on leaving a legacy for that group that spoke to their needs and interests and the empowerment of women in our community something they could use beyond their time with her. Students can sometimes struggle to see the bigger picture of the community around them. 
That's expected in some ways, but I've always known Katie to work to situate herself in that bigger landscape. Whether it's a discussion about policy, history, community engagement, Katie is focused on simultaneously broadening and deepening her understanding of gender, gender identity, sexuality, and women's empowerment, and I cannot wait to see what she does next. Congratulations, Katie. The Iris Holt McEwen Community Service Award is presented to a student whose service to Elon and the larger community exemplifies the generosity of spirit and dedication to philanthropy of Iris Holt McEwen. This year's recipient is Maria Santana Garces. Maria serves as the campus kitchen director in Elon Volunteers, where she leads Elon's efforts to end food waste and hunger in our community. She also gives leadership to positively impact the community in her other spheres of influence. She has volunteered with a variety of organizations through her participation with the service fraternity APO and through her academics with her public health major. For example, she has volunteered over 50 hours at the Open Door Clinic where, among other things, she uses her Spanish language skills to help translate for patients. Using her experience to help other students through her many roles on campus, Maria has made a positive mark throughout the Elon and Alamance community. Congratulations, Maria. Good afternoon. My name is John Dooley. I'm the Vice President for Student Life at Elon. It is my honor to present the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award. Each year, the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award is presented to two students and one faculty or staff member. Sponsored by the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Foundation, these awards recognize individuals who demonstrate the highest standards of character, integrity, and service to others or in their community. Each year, a campus committee has the enjoyable task of looking for those people in our midst who lead with humility and whose inner light brightens our days. The first recipient this year is a graduating senior who is recognized and respected by many across campus. He is a member of the Periclean Scholar Class of 2019 and was described as a consistent class leader. Quote, his guidance encourages the highest degree of ethical consideration and respect for the partners and the people they serve. Many of his ideas were formative in regards to the development and execution of the work performed by the class. He chose not to join the Periclean class on their trip to Sri Lanka but he, because he recognized the significant expense associated with the students that attended and decided that the funds were better spent on the people of Sri Lanka. A staff member at the university noted that leadership and service of others is something he lives on a daily basis. Through his work in the Kernodal Center, he is described as a calm and confident ambassador who listens carefully and matches the interests of the group to the issues they want to address. Currently, he serves as lead ambassador and mentors younger students. He is committed to alcohol and drug abuse prevention and has worked with the Virginia Youth Alcohol and Drug Prevention Project during the summers. Our recipient is also an Isabella Cannon Leadership Fellow, an honor board member, and active in Catholic campus ministry. One nominator noted his commitment to use spring break his senior year to serve others and to lead students in the experience of serving others. While many were taking advantage of this last break to be with friends, he dedicated himself to service and leadership, a choice that demonstrates his character. Our recipient was described by another staff member as one of the finest young people I know. He is mature, responsible, and ethical. He has a strong work ethic and uses his leadership to help others. His strongly held values about respecting others and valuing difference are beyond what most people his age have developed. He is a senior from Radford, Virginia with a political science major and a minor in leadership studies. I am pleased to present the first Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award to Walker Helms.
Our second recipient of the Sullivan Award is someone that many students refer to as a positive role model and caring mentor. She is a living example of Elon's commitment to inspire others to act as leaders and global citizens. The mission and purpose behind her involvement in organizations has been to create spaces for underrepresented voices to be heard and to be a part of initiatives that create positive change for other students and our community at large. Her leadership style as a servant leader is exemplary, and she is described as engaging and serving in multi-faith programs at Elon with enthusiasm and integrity. A staff member stated, from the moment I met her, she made a good impression on me due to her pleasant personality and willingness to serve others. A professor stated they found this person's research to be critical, timely, and important. She is respectful, responsible, and inspiring. She can work both independently and in a team, productively with a great sense of humility. Another faculty member noted she organized a campus event around addressing intolerance, highlighting her commitment to working on issues of justice and equality. She has built an impressive record of leadership on campus, and she will make an important positive difference in the world. A senior administrator commented that he has witnessed her on the big stage delivering talks to hundreds of people, standing before small crowds presenting her research, and engaging with peers. And she always exudes thought, care, and determination for making people better. As her service to others increases, so does her capacity to make an indelible positive impact on our society, one that is reflective of previous Algernon Sidney Sullivan recipients. Our recipient is involved with Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Leadership Development Quarter for Omicron Delta Kappa, a summer intern for the Center for Leadership, and president of the Elon Muslim Society. She is a senior from Memphis, Tennessee, with a double major in policy studies and sociology, and minors in criminal justice and political science. Please help me congratulate our second recipient of the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award, Mariatu Okonafo. If you look in your program, you find the list of characteristics for recipients of the Sullivan Award. Honesty, morality, ethics, integrity, responsibility, determination, courage, and compassion. As the selection committee considered these characteristics, we were surprised to discover that our faculty staff recipient had not received this award previously. Since the day this person arrived on campus 13 years ago, they have been the kind of mentor to students, faculty, and staff, staff whose leadership and character is demonstrated through their actions day in and day out. There is a long list of achievements from this person's time at Elon, but I thought it might be best for us to hear the reflections of some of the students' lives who they have touched. One student writes, it was my first day at Elon, and I was scared, insecure, and really unsure if Elon was the right place for me. As I sat in awkward silence with the other first years at a welcome luncheon, you could feel the anxiety and anticipation. Then in walked this person. Leading with her radiant smile the way she always does, she went to the front of the room, took a, big, a great big inhale, and said welcome, with the largest full-bodied motion with her arms that I have ever seen. It was yoga-like, full-circled and awesome, as if her arms were a flower opening or a sun being formed. Her arms were as wide enough to hold the whole room, and her gesture made us breathe, helped us laugh, and brought us home to Elon. And for the next four years, I never lost her embrace. Another student writes, one of my favorite moments with her was on a normal day in the office. She had just come in the door, clearly in a rush from a previous meeting, and saw me sitting at the front desk, looking pretty defeated from some things that had been happening. She stopped, looked at me, and said, friend, do you want to talk? I noticed how busy she looked and knew she had an upcoming meeting. She looked me straight in the eyes and said, Nothing is more important than helping a friend, so come back to my office. That moment and that perspective on life has deeply impacted my view of the world. To this day, I stop, no matter what the consequence, to help a friend, all because one of my best friends and mentors in college always stopped to help me. And there are so many more of these from alums. Unafraid to learn from her students, showing that her students as colleagues model is not simply a nice phrase, but a way of life. Selflessness, generosity, and friendship that have influenced my self-confidence, achievements, and vision for the leader I hope to be. A lifetime leader, mentor, and support system for former students like me. Humble mentor and servant leader, I can't think of anyone more deserving of this award. 
and one of my favorites. She probably has one of the biggest hearts on campus, but that does not mean she won't challenge you. I've tried to get off the hook with her before, and it does not work. <laughs> Our recipient arrived at Elon in 2006 as the director of the Kernodal Center for Service Learning and Community Engagement. In 2013, she was promoted and added as assistant dean of campus life to her title. And as we hear from the words of so many former students, our recipient is well-loved and respected across campus. I need to get this moving because she's sitting right behind me. <laughs> I'm afraid of what she's plotting back there. It gives me great pleasure to announce this year's faculty staff recipient of the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award is my friend and colleague, Mary Morrison. <laughs> And now poor Mary has to present an award. <laughs> I just need a minute. All right, we'll give Mary a little chance. One of the rewarding parts of being provost at Elon is that each spring, I have the privilege of presenting the Barney Award to the graduating senior or seniors with the highest GPA. This year, two recipients have earned perfect 4.0s. Two. This is the first time I've ever given two. Our first recipient is from Oakton, Virginia, and is a double major in marketing and management with a concentration in human resource management. She has also completed a minor in psychology. In recognition of her academic excellence, she has already received several awards from the Love School of Business, including the Walter Hattenbach Award in Marketing, the Alpha Kappa Psi Scholarship Key Award, and the Student Achievement in Management Award. As an honor student, she has been conducting research over the past several years entitled, Reexamining the Demand for Human Resource Certifications in the United States. She has presented her work at SURF and the Society for Industrial and Organizational Psychology. The manuscript, based on her work, has been invited for revision at the highly respected International Journal of Selection and Assessment. She has completed an internship, studied abroad in Italy, has been a leader in Elon's Society of Human Resource Management study organization. This summer, she will join IBM as a consultant in DC. As one faculty member notes, her writing skills, analytical abilities, need for achievement, and, in, and intellect are unmatched for this stage of her career. She is the only undergraduate student in my 12 years that I would strongly, strongly recommend for a PhD program. I have no doubt that her Elon education and her personal qualities will serve her well as she embarks upon the next phase of her life and that she will be a wonderful ambassador for the value of an Elon education. Please join me in congratulating Jenna Baer as one of the 2019 <laughs> Barney Award recipients. The second Barney Award recipient is from East Chester, New York, and is completing a double major in psychology and arts administration with minors in business administration and dance. For the past several years, this student has worked with her mentor conducting research entitled, What Would You Do? Predicting Recommendation of Resources in a Hypothetical Sexual Assault Situation. She has presented her very important work at SURF and the Carolinas Psycholo Psychology Conference. 
It is obvious from her majors and minors that this student has varied interests and has clearly excelled at all of her academic work. She is, she is also fully engaged the Elon experiences, completing undergraduate research, an internship in arts administration, and studying around the globe with the Semester at Sea program. She has volunteered her time to organizations such as Relay for Life, Elonthon, and held leadership positions in Dance Works and Alpha Chi Omega. As her faculty mentor notes, in class, she is often the sharpest person in the room, but is also thoughtful and humble. She is reflective and thinks deeply about course content and how to make connections between all of her classes. She manages a very full plate of activities, but is never one to say that something didn't get done because she is too busy. She is always there and ready in every setting. This recipient is planning to attend graduate school in psychology after taking some time to work and decide the right path for future study. I am certain that her dedication, passion for knowledge, intellect, and impressive work ethic will serve her well in whatever pathway she chooses. Please join me in congratulating Kellyanne Bonanno as the 2000 recipient of the Kelly. Well, clearly it's not a great idea to surprise me <laughs> uh, because I am so deeply honored uh, to be acknowledged with that award, mainly because I have known the students who've received that award in the past and they're people I deeply admire, as well as the faculty and staff who've come before me to receive that award. So I'm feeling very humbled uh, by that recognition. Um, so let's talk about the Newman Civic Fellow. Lucy Jones has been named the Newman Civic Fellow by Campus Compact in recognition of her investment in finding solutions for challenges facing communities and her passion for enacting social change. A philosophy major who is minoring in political science, religious studies, and poverty and social justice, Lucy is focused on addressing issues of voter participation and civic engagement, particularly among college students. A member of the Elon Political Engagement Workgroup, she collaborates with members of the university community to improve political awareness and civic engagement on campus. Lucy will be joining 262 fellows that were selected for the 2019 honor of Newman Civic Fellow, and she'll be participating in national um, workshops and conferences uh, that will deepen her understanding of civic engagement and will bring that back to our university. She's not here um, because she is studying abroad. I'm having a little trouble here. She is studying abroad in South Africa and also um, in London this semester. And I'm looking out into this incredible community and I would be remiss not to recognize my colleagues and co-workers in the Cronodal Center because everything that we've been able to achieve through our work in the Cronodal Center, we have, we have achieved together. And by that, I not only mean the professional staff, but I'm also seeing the faces of many of our student leaders who have been recognized today and are also here to support their friends. So I do want to say that um, all work is achieved with others and I am so um, pleased and excited uh, that they can share this moment with me. Thank you. The William Mosley Brown Leadership Award is presented by Elon Circle of Omicron Delta Kappa to a student who consistently demonstrates the highest ideals and principles of ODK, scholarship, service, integrity, character, and fellowship, including providing distinguished leadership to his or her peers. 
The award is named in honor of a former Elon faculty member who was one of the original founders of the national chapter of ODK. This year's awardee is David Duncan. David Duncan is an Isabella Cannon Leadership Fellow, a member of Sigma Delta Pi Spanish Honor Society and Psy Chi Psychology Honor Society. As a 2018 Leadership Prize recipient, he's researched the life and mental health experiences of immigrant students and identifying their coping mechanisms, um, presenting his work um, nationally. In addition to his research, he began and led a new student organization here at Elon University, Immigrant Realities, a group committed to continuing to raise awareness and improve conditions for immigrants on our campus. David also volunteers his time with immigrant and refugee outreach to tutor kids at Legacy Crossing in Greensboro. One of his nominators shared that he is a role model who takes the time to listen to people, understands where they are, and then finds unique and caring ways to support them. They shared he is extremely dedicated to everything he puts his mind to and is a leader in many areas across campus. He is an incredible, he has an incredible character and serves all those around him. Another nominator shared that he is passionate about the well-being of people. He selfishly guides Elon students on the path towards finding themselves. They stated when David wasn't studying or preparing for the LSAT, sorry, he, is volunteer, or he was volunteering or getting involved in his local community. They share that Elon is lucky, but next year some brilliant law school will be even luckier. Well, that brilliant law school will be Duke University. <laughs> and continues to leave and serve um, in law school in fall, in the fall of 2019. The 2019 Elon Circle of ODK, um, Omicron Delta Kappa William Mosley Brown Leadership Award is presented to David Duncan. Shaking, so I'm sorry. <laughs> the tight is really tight. Hmm. There we go. Well, this concludes our award ceremony this evening. Um, can we give all of our award recipients another round of applause?